Let's talk about PAX, baby. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about you and me. me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that we see while we were at PAX. While we were at PAX. Welcome to the PAX Vlog 2018. <laughs> hey everybody, we're changing up the format this year instead of doing like four vlogs, one for every day. Sometimes in the past we did five. Uh, we're just gonna do one after PAX so that I don't stay up super late and die. So uh, in the past we'd sort of like wax on and on about the games that we absolutely loved and had a good time with. And while I think that that's important, I think a lot of people are able to sort of like we tell you a game and you guys can do your own research and stuff. So instead, I like us to just sort of like quickly mm -hmm. say some games and more just talk about what we had fun with. Sure. Not just packs, but like sure. just every day. Okay. So starting, let's start at day zero before even packs. Yeah. What we did. We went to a party that was, uh, had awesome stuff. Yeah. We went to the- It was organized, not so great. We went to the Brace Yourself party. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dude, that concert was rocking. It was. Brace Yourself is the publisher, Brace Yourself Games. They did Crypto the Necrodancer. Mm -hmm. There was amazing music there. Yes. They had yeah. this dude on a guitar who was shredding it so hard. It was live performances of the Necrodancer mm -hmm. uh, soundtrack. Exactly. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Danny B. Danny B from Isaac of Binding. Uh, Isaac, Isaac of Binding. Binding. Isaac yep. of Binding. Family. Isaac Binding. <laughs> New game coming out, 2028. Yeah. yeah. Isaac Binding, Ed McDonald. You need to repent. He needs to make some money. <laughs> And okay, so that was day zero. Yep, that was a fun little party. Then moved on to day one, mm -hmm. Friday. Uh, what did we do? You saw Spider Man. Yeah, so media hour happened. PAX kind of screwed up media hour this year, but that's a whole other thing. Um, right away, I went and saw Spider Man, which is coming out by the time this video is coming out. Spider Man is probably going to come out in like two days or something. Um, but hell, if that's not a freaking entertaining game, I cannot wait for that game. I love Insomniac Games, I love what they did with Open World in Sunset Overdrive. Can't wait for Spider-Man. I heard from Brian J. Yeah. That while you're waiting in line to play Spider-Man, they're giving people yes daily newspaper. bugles. Yeah. Daily, daily bugle bugles. newspapers. I saw Chad get. I, I got one for Chad because he's a big Spider-Man fan. Like the snacks. Yes. Yes, the daily bugles. We give you this bugle, your daily bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. How will be this Spider-Man? Eat, eat of this bugle. <laughs> it is my flesh. Um. <laughs> What did you guys drink of this Mountain Dew? What did you guys do during your media hour? Uh, during our media hour, um, honestly, not a whole lot. Uh, Price tried to play Resident Evil 2. I don't think you were too successful there. No, I, well, I was going to play Resident Evil 2, um, and then we had to leave before I could get in. So I would like, legit, the Resident Evil 2 line every day is four hours long and capped as soon as pack starts. I, during media hour, I was like the first person in line. And yeah. I was like ready to go. And I was like checking the time, I was checking the time, I was checking the time. We had to be somewhere right at 10, so I was unable to do it, and I'm salty. I'm I didn't salty. care about media hour, to be honest. I'm just like appreciating the empty floor, basically. I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna walk around in this empty space because I will never have this opportunity. I, I care now it. because I'm, we're gonna leave PAX and I will not have been able to play Mega Man 11 the rest of the day too. That's true, Mega Man 11 looks dope. Yep. Mega Man 11 looks uh, pretty cool. So instead, what I ended up doing for most of my media hour is I instead went over and I talked to the um, developers of Monster Prom about the upcoming DLC. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Media for me is just checking out the games and just saying hi to the developers. Like, uh, I stopped by Rose City Games and checked out Will McClure. Mm -hmm. Said hi to Corey and Lewis because they were there this Big year. Squad. And yep. said hi to Monster Prom people and stuff like that. What was the game? you took away from Friday? From Friday. I mean, for me, it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. Boyfriend Dungeon. Boyfriend Dungeon. Right, you had your appointment for Boyfriend Dungeon. And Boyfriend, Boyfriend Dungeon. Boyfriend Dungeon is a um, dungeon crawly, kind of bastion style gameplay mixed with a dating sim where you date your weapons and that's how you level up and gain skills. So, um, your weapons turn into um, mm -hmm. uh, cute Boyfriends. people. Yeah. Boyfriends and girlfriends and, and cats. There's a cat. You can't date the cat though, unfortunately. You well, no, but the cat's a weapon. You can make him a friend. And you can make him a friend. Every cat's a weapon. Not every relationship has to be romantic. Every cat's a weapon. Yeah. That's true. Um, what about you, Jelly? Uh, got a Roboto. I am super excited uh, for the boys that did a charge shot. 
They I made got our bottle. Me and Rick bought the same shirt. It's so cute. Because we got to freaking represent. It's so cute. Also, uh, I didn't see it day one, but day two, we saw the Goose Game. Yeah. I need to get my hands on that well, Goose Game. Well, you can game. talk about that when you get Saturday. Shush about your Saturday. You're jumping ahead. Uh, I checked out um, Blood Roots. That game is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Blood Roots. Yep. Just super fast paced, slashing them up. It's Jackie Chan meets uh, Isometric Hotline Miami, uh, Miami. with uh, Samurai Jack art style. It's Samurai Jack. I, I, I honestly, the first thing I, the artistically, the first thing I took away from it was Flame in the Flood. So if you play Flame in the Flood, very, very Flame in the Flood esque art mm -hmm. style. Yeah. Uh, okay. What did we do after PAX on Friday? Twitch party. Twitch party. Twitch party. Which was good this year. Oh man. Uh, yeah, Twitch uh, held their party at the Museum of Pop, mm -hmm. previously called the Electronic Music Project. Mm -hmm. Mo Pop. Mo Pop. Um, if, if you guys haven't seen what that building looks like, Google it. It's a Frank Gehry design. I'll just it's show it to you right so you're now. showing it to them now. Don't tell them to Google it. You're showing it to them. Uh, right now. But you should still Google it. It's a Frank Gehry building. I, I like Frank Gehry. Gary. Um, anyway. Huge space, huge event. We have talked smack on Twitch parties in the past because the previous one we went to in 2016 was not held that well. No, it, it, it was pretty unprofessional. Yeah. I've never been. This one, super fun. Uh, there was a like a quartet. Or a, a, a four string quartet that was playing like, not just video game songs, but like, but like music? nerd songs, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, they were playing like- Jurassic Park. Caught them playing Toto. Toto's Africa at one point, you know? At the end of the night, they were playing the tango from True Lies, and I was losing my mind. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and then upstairs, there was like a DJ and a huge dance floor, and- It, it was just cool. Uh, it was, it was, it was a really beautiful. We space. saw some great people. Hung out with some amazing people. Got to know some fellow streamers a lot better, which yeah. was great. But what I thought was pretty fun, and we didn't really figure out that it was a permanent exhibit, or at least I didn't until a little bit later on. Since it's the Museum of Pop, they have an entire room devoted to like the history of indie games. Yep. And they have all of these playable indie games with descriptions yep. of them. Uh, there was one that was called. Tina Wanya Teens. God, that, that game is great. Tina Wanya Ten, Teens. Tenya, Tenya Wenya, right? No, it's Tina Wanya because I had to Google it so many times. Okay. And uh, it's developed by the Katamari developer, Katamari Damacy. But what's interesting about it is it wasn't developed for any platform. It was no. developed specifically for one con, one year, and they have it here. And it is the most incredible game that we've ever played. And yeah. it's so sad that we will never it's, have the chance to play it again. I think we have a couple of like 15 second clips that we'll show, but yeah. it's like the, it's the controllers are these like 16 buttons that change color and they tell you like this action is a color and you just have to remember that for the rest of the game. And then they're going to keep on asking you to do like fart. And you have to remember, oh, that's the purple button. But the no. purple button won't be in the same place all the time. Yeah. It'll switch the location of the purple button. <laughs> exactly. Oh, the game. And it's just so stupid and funny. It's, yeah. And it's, it's not great. even that long either. And it's no. so competitive too, because yeah. you're side by side trying to read the same magazine and trying to take the same shower. So really, I said that my, my game of the day was uh, Blood Roots, but honestly, I'm um, retconning that because my game that I took away from Friday was Tenuanya Teens. That was amazing. We'll never forget that game. <laughs> All right, so that was Friday. Saturday. What did we do? Saturday. What did we, it's always. So we went back to PAX. Of course. I don't, I don't think we did uh, too much that morning. Uh, yeah. We went straight to PAX and then. Because we had our meetup. That's right. Yeah. We did have our, our fan meetup. Yep. That's uh, our third annual fan meetup. Yes. Is it third or fourth? Third. I don't think we did one the first year. Okay. And yeah. we we weren't hot stuff then. We weren't, we weren't VIP. No one knew we were. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. Every year it gets better. Uh, there was a bunch of people that showed up. Mm -hmm. We played a bunch of games with everybody. We always do it at GameWorks. We always play like four person Pac-Man. We always get the upstairs rented out so we can do a bunch of Smash Brothers with everybody. Yep. yep. <laughs> and like this is separate from our, our meetup, but our, a bunch of our moderators made it to PAX this year as well. So obviously we got to see them. That was super lovely. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been a blast being able to just meet up with all of y'all this year. It's been great. And then Saturday night. Yes. What did we the do? Red Bull Challenge. Oh, what did we do? What did we do? 
Oh, I forgot my voice there, is what we did. <laughs> so the Red Bull Challenge mode is an event that happened for two days, but on the second day it was focused primarily on Gang Beast, as well as uh, Doze One closed out the show with a live performance. Um, the amazing Mike. John Brown, developer extraordinaire of Gang Beast. And his brother Mike, they flew to town for this event. Yes, and uh, unbeknownst to us, signed us up <laughs> for, for a tournament. There was a, there was a Gang Beast tournament and they said, you guys are gonna be part of the penultimate uh, tournament, but you guys are gonna be playing against each other. You have your own bracket, basically. Yep. So they played and um, Jasmine won. Yeah. Jasmine beat all of us. Be oh. You all beat me, and then Jasmine won, <laughs> sir. Jasmine won against all of us. We all lost, therefore Jasmine beat all of us. Anyway, anyway. It's, it's a good thing that Jasmine won because she went on to make some epic plays, but uh, we're glad that she lost only because there was, an <laughs> there was an amazing boy who was playing, a kid, a yeah. kid, and led to the most epic final that I've seen in my life. Yes. yes. We've got some footage, hopefully it's usable. Yeah. And I want to shout out Junior, who won the entire yes. friggin' thing. It was the, incredible. The little yeah. kid that beat Jasmine went on to move through the brackets and won the whole thing. It was and amazing. The, the entire audience. The entire place was going crazy. Yeah. Hundreds of people lost like, their minds. It was like a wrestling show. Um, yeah. It was great, and uh, yeah, what we might do, if the footage is usable, we might actually edit together that whole event and put it out as like a short five, 10 minute episode for you guys. Yeah. Um, so that that party was awesome. That that day itself, we didn't talk about any other games, so let's quickly just like shout out a couple of things that we saw on the floor that maybe we didn't get to play previously. Um, Fogs? F Fogs? Fogs. Oh, Fogs. Fogs. Fogs, like that. P-H. Uh, OGS, OGS yeah. Fogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So made by Coatsync, the uh, guys that handle the online for Gang Beast, they um, they put together this game that's, uh, I mean, think of like Push Me Pull You, the characters that have two heads, except they are dogs. Um, and instead of like, uh, you're like working cooperatively to move through these levels, one person like grabs a fire hose and the other person's head literally spits water. Um, yeah. And you have to complete objectives that way. And you need like to co-op puzzler. And yeah. you need to end the level by finding an acorn and then dropping the acorn into a Nidhogg-esque mouth. But not just the acorn, you too. Mm -hmm. You jump into the Nidhogg yeah. and then you move on to the next stage mm -hmm. through the Nidhogg. Uh, that game looks super cute. It's going to be great. You guys, you guys will love guys seeing love it. it yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some other good co-op stuff that's coming down the pipes, but probably not for uh, you know six months to a year. Mm, yeah. I really liked playing the game uh, with friends like these. Mm. That was an amazing co-op game. It's a uh, two-player co-op, but basically one of you plays as a blue little face and one of you plays as a pink one. You link up, and then as you move to the stage, kind of like Runbo, when the stage is a certain color, then you can, one person will be moving, the other shooting. And then once the stage turns a different color, it swaps. And now all of a sudden uh, somebody else is moving, somebody else is right. shooting. But the art style is really, really cute. And yeah, uh, yeah that's gonna be a ton of fun to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so that was pretty much our Saturday. Uh, Sunday. Today. 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 We Today, had a, a beautiful breakfast. Yes. This ish. Yes. And then we, uh, we wandered in and, um, I have to say, I got to explore a little bit more of like the floor today, mm -hmm. and I'm really excited to see Knights and Bikes. Knights and Bikes looks great. Looks really, really good. There's this new indie game that's called Witchwood that I would actually like to get more information on. Good. That had a kind of like Secret of the Kells feel. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, very interesting. Check that one out yeah, we spent a lot of time at the yeah. Indie Mega booth. Um, <laughs> What did I play today that I was really into? There was a game called Future Black 88 that looks really cool. Yeah. It's a co-op side-scrolling uh, uh, brawler that's just like, you know, set in the future 80s, so everything's really neon and lasers and super fast-paced and really cool. Um, I, uh, I checked out the DLC for Binding of Isaac. Oh, yeah, yeah. Little More Isaac? Too. More Isaac. Yeah, what'd you think? It was good. Yeah. It was more Isaac. It's more Isaac. Did yeah. you... Some good items. I won. Get a chance to look at Bumbo? I did not. I got to look over someone's shoulder at Bumbo. What do you... Because I, I actually, I did the same. I uh -huh. still can't tell what the game is. It is a match three RPG. Interesting. So you use a match three to like, um, basically like, 
earn your abilities that you then use to hit the enemies. Okay. So it's like you match three or four poops and then you can use a poop ability, like that kind of thing. Got it. And then you fight like the different monsters and you try and gain as much money as you can as you go down into the dungeon. I you know, always match four it's poops bumbo. to get a new poop ability. Nick. <laughs> Rick's been matching too many poops while we've been here. It's actually mm -hmm. something we gotta talk to him about. So yeah, I spent a lot of time today just getting B-roll um, for this vlog, um, but in that process, I noticed, I was very shocked that, so next to, in the Sony booth, next to Spider-Man, they have just like a couple little pods, one screen each, maybe two screens for like little smaller games that you can just sort of pop into. A lot of them have lines, like for whatever reason, FIFA's over there and its line is capped instantly every day. Um, things like Splunky's over there and usually it has a very long line, it's a very popular game. But Squanch Tendo's new game is over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it got no line. Really? Yeah. Um, the VR one? The So they in one of the VR sections, they have a VR version of it. But I was happy to see that there's a non-VR version. Oh, of it. amazing. Good. Uh, I believe it's called Trevor Saves the World. Trover. Trover Saves, mm -hmm. uh, saves the good. Universe. Saves Trover the, Saves the Universe. Saves yes. the Universe. Yeah. So I got to play like a 10 minute version of that. Oh, you actually got to play it? That's yeah. good. And it's hilarious. I'm so um, glad because all of their games pretty much have been VR. Yeah. I'm so glad they're making non-VR. It's a non-VR. Like. You can tell it's made for VR. Yeah. The way that you, because you still play it in ways where you like jump to another location. Sure. Um, but what I, I mean, it's hilarious. I'm going to play it. I'm going to have fun with it. Yeah. Um, I asked some of the things from the Sony booth that I haven't talked about yet. I got to play Dreams uh, one of the days, and Dreams actually took me by surprise because I was talking crap about it, honestly, previously. But uh, the demos that I got to play were actually very impressive. So I am curious to see once. It's not just Medium Molecule making these demos, once it's the general public making the content for the game, if it will live up and be as... You know, I, I gotta say, like, you talking shit on it, I, I don't think that's your fault. They've done a really good job, or a poor job, advertising the game. Like, everything that I've seen them advertise so far has not made it look that appealing. No. Once you actually, like, see it, you're like, oh yeah, this is pretty cool, but... Yeah. The way that they're marketing it, you're like, what is this and how is this practical? They, right. They're marketing it as like a game engine that you can use to build your own game. Right. But within a game. But even the stuff is... that they've showed that you can make, I'm like, that seems underwhelming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, like some of it, anyway, uh, I, I am curious to see what the general public goes, simply because like, I still to this day think that Little Big Planet, which Media Molecule has done as well, um, the levels that you know, Molecule made in Little Big Planet, the user created levels never were as nearly as polished as the user right. levels. Yeah. So, uh, I'll additionally adding to what we saw today, towards the end of the day, Ashley told me I should go over there and see Pathfinder Keymaker because I've been eyeing that game for a long time. I love Baldur's Gate, Divinity, those type of style games. Going over there and talking to the dev about the game itself. Everything about it is so appealing. It's a interesting game because it's set in the Pathfinder universe. If you're familiar with the actual modules, you actually know some of the characters and stories and like locations, which is actually really amazing. But like it has this beautiful UI that's very much like Kingdom Come, where it's got this like really like um, illustrated look. Uh, they were saying that like towards the end game, you can actually make cities and within these cities, you can start adding and building your own like little place. You can actually go into and explore on foot as your character and depending how you play also affects how what like, what type of city you make. Mm. So everything about it looks good. Does that it's, mean like, is there like a, mor a morality type thing? Yeah, like, so like so if, I, if you're if really you play good, like bad, then you're gonna have like a bad right. city. You're gonna have a city that's gonna have like more more like scummy people, monsters like that. But he also said that if you make alliance with those monsters, they might also just be in your town being like good people. That's cool. That's so cool. it's really cool. So like, like the whole uh, game itself is like it, it really goes back and like takes a lot of those mechanics that you're familiar with in Baldur's Gate, like camping. But like they're like in camping in this one, you actually set up your camp, you assign each person a role. And so when you camp, yeah, they do things me, for you, like like that moon hunters. Me of moon hunters, yeah. yeah like someone has to go hunt, and someone mm. has to. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it's a really interesting game. It's single player right now, but yeah. he's like, it's one of those games that's gonna have like 200 space, places to go to. It's gonna be an 80 hour game if you wanna like, experience all of it. Yeah. I am Dad super hyped. Super Dad hyped. Excited. One thing that we all did together yeah. is we went and we were able to check out. Um, Diablo 3 on yeah. the Switch. On the Switch. Yeah. We were all pretty confused a little bit about that because we've always been online players, so the idea of mm -hmm. playing local 
even though we did all have our own device that we were playing on. So that's the cool that I wanted to touch on that. We each had our own Switch mm -hmm. um, and it was connect, we were all playing together, but we weren't online. We were playing via Bluetooth, yeah. which I think is rad. And um, Beth, who set up the appointment for us, mm -hmm. she was, works at PR for Blizzard. She told us that on the plane, they were playing it together that way as well. Cool stuff too. Um, you don't need to play online. Like it doesn't need to be always online. Right. If you are on a plane, then you can play offline. And the second that you get internet access, it'll cloud save your stuff. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So I thought that was really slick. Um, and it's that... gonna have the controls so that you can play it. Like you don't even have to have the full Joy-Con. You can even have the half Joy-Con. You can just have one Joy-Con and so, still play. Which there's is like, amazing to there's consider. There's some sort of motion functionality that will handle a lot of the functions in the game. Um, uh, yeah, they, they went to a lot of effort to make it all playable. It's really, it's pretty impressive that yeah. they managed to fit it onto the Switch version because they didn't cut anything out. It's the full 100% mm -hmm. and all the expansions. But you still like can play on one screen. We did you play, can. we played on uh, seven separate uh, because there were more than just the four of us. Separate. We were group uh, of four. They were group of four. Switches, yeah. but uh, one of the guys who was walking us through the experience was saying like, he would play on the plane with his daughter. They would just yeah. set it up and you she can, would have a remote and he would have a remote. And, could and I've seen some footage of, yeah, you can do four person shared screen local um, on Diablo, which just means, yeah, no one can leave the edge of the screen, mm -hmm. but you can do it. Um, and yeah, the Switch supports that as well. So that was really cool. That was a fun experience. Um, I'm interested in it simply because I think I'm the only one with a Switch in this group and I mainly use the Switch when I'm traveling, mm -hmm. um, that's when I get the most enjoyment or use out of it. When I'm home, I'm like, I've got my PC. Um, but it's nice to see that the more AAA content like that is yeah. getting made for it. And yeah. I really like Diablo, so that's pretty cool. So that's been our experience with games uh, thus far. It's Sunday, obviously there's another day of mm -hmm. PAX, mm -hmm. but we're recording this early because we're gonna be leaving PAX midday tomorrow and we're probably not gonna have time to film something like this. Um, I just want to say in general, like we spent a lot of this talking about games. I know at the beginning I said we weren't going to wax on that much about it, but we did. But I just want to like sort of, I wanted to make sure we touched on everything that we did every day because a lot to us, PAX is super important for the convention. Obviously we love seeing all the games and obviously talking about the games, mm -hmm. but we've said, and I, I want to like share this experience with you that we get at least equal if not more amount of benefit from going to like the after parties and networking with people and doing stuff like that and then also getting to i don't know experience um i don't know just different cool events that happen just during packs but not necessarily yeah. at packs um like the bethesda thing mm -hmm. like there's currently a seattle indie expo thing which we didn't have time to check out but oh, meeting meeting these people that we've been working with for years and years yeah. and years we didn't even mention it but we had a chance to meet barney from uh powerhoof powerhoof the creators of crawl oh. which was the first big game that really popped off on uh on yeah. stump you know they helped and, rocket us uh, yeah i mean after three years seeing this guy and actually seeing him in the flesh it, yeah it was it was great it was great um and then yeah beyond that we have fun uh staying with our friends and and doing different things this year we're staying with mm -hmm. it's nine of us in total in this house <laughs> we have this ridiculous house that maybe after this i'll film a little thing i'm gonna <laughs> show it to you guys right now or this house is a monstrosity. It's seven bedroom. Uh, it's got the. It's not a monstrosity. I want to make it clear. It's a nice house. It's, it's a, a very, very nice, nice house. house. It's just monstrously big. Yeah. Um, the smallest bed in the house is a queen. Uh, and, and yeah, it's it's great. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's just a blast. All weekends a blast. If anyone out there is curious about going to PAX, definitely do. But I just want to say there's so much to do yeah. Yeah. besides yeah. PAX as well. Yeah. So make sure you're getting reach, that yeah. full experience. Yeah, you look do, outside, reach outside. Do, do a little Googling and on. see what's happening when, when PAX the floor ends. And yeah. I'll say like for me, like a big part is like, I love talking to people and meeting people at PAX. So it's like, we meet and talk with fans. You know, if you see yeah. us on the floor, you can come up to us and be like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, no, met a couple in the, in the grilled cheese place today. Yeah. Very cool guys, very nice dudes. Yeah. Yeah. We met, yeah. we met uh, other Twitch streamers that we're fans of or that you know mm -hmm. we know of and everything like that and making connections that way. Meeting the developers yep. and the games that we really like to do. You know, it's like just being in the space. It's like, uh, Everybody here loves games and is united around games. And so you can just start up a conversation with literally anybody. If you're in line to play a game, when I was in line to play Isaac, for example, I just started talking to the people mm -hmm. in front and behind me just about Isaac. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so it's like, um, 
the the atmosphere is something to where like you feel yeah. that community. There were so many times that I mean, obviously we play multiplayer games and. I go to check one out and I see a guy standing there like, just like, oh, I love to play this game. I'm like, you need a partner? Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Playing multiplayer games with complete strangers, getting yeah. to know one another. Yeah. It's fun stuff. So yeah. That's what PAX is? Yeah. PAX it up. PAX is love. So I think that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, this is now our fourth PAX yeah. in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we uh, talked about PAX. Baby. Talk about you and me. Um, I just want to say, be sure to, if you've been on the fence about coming out to PAX, uh, be sure to come out next year. Yeah, that's right. Come to our meetup, mm -hmm. have fun with us. It's always a blast. Oh, special shout out to anybody from GameWorks watching. You guys helped us out a lot this year. You guys hooked us up. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I just want to say thank, uh, thank you guys for watching. Let us know what you guys thought of I don't know, this format of vlog and whatnot, what you guys might want to see in a future convention vlog like that. Um, and yeah, with that, we've been stumped. I've been Ashram Rick Price and Jasmine. We'll catch you all next time. Bye, Bye everybody! Guys.